Hey, this is Tom, Junkie XL. Welcome to Studio Time Season 2. And in this episode, uh, I will discuss my machine room, my VSL connection, and how this all kind of worked. I got so many questions about it, even though I do a really good explanation on it in Season 1, um, how the template works and how it's all being set up. So I would definitely see that episode if you can find it and if you want to watch that. But let me do another rundown on this and I will incorporate a lot of questions that I got over the last year, what you guys wanted to know. Okay, so let's go now to Cubase. I want to focus on one particular machine at this point and then I'll explain a little more. So one machine in a machine room is dedicated to just all the orchestral sounds. And that allows us to play all these. So if I skip through a couple of MIDI tracks right here, we have strings here, we have more strings, we have more strings, uh, we have a string here, more string here, let's scroll way more down. Uh, now we get to uh, string effects that I recorded for Run All Night. Let's scroll down even more. Now we get to the woodwinds, we have a contrabassoon. Let's scroll even more down. Here we have more woodwinds. What do we have here? The grace notes for the wind. For the woods. Let's scroll even more down. And here we have our horns. All the way down, all the way down. Ah, we have a hanging note. MIDI reset and that solves that. And then on the very bottom, we have the Lacrimosa Choir. Okay, so all these tracks, all these samples, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, come from one VSL machine. And in this case, this machine is called VSL machine number six. Yes, I have six VSL machines connected to this Cubase rig. So let's open up Remote Desktop. And now we can look at these six machines. Um, my studio has a name and it's called Paradise. Every studio in this building, there are five of them, have unique names. There's Paradise, there's Hell, there's Cabin, there's The Future, and there is Oasis. So those are the five studio names, which always leads to very uh, interesting conversations in types of stress, and that's gonna light us up by saying, take this file from the future, throw it in Hell, and then back to Paradise. Um, so let's now look at this setup. So VSL number one is just sound design. VSL number two is the Omega Legacy, which means that there are a lot of really old libraries on there that uh, are not being supported anymore. Um, they're on there. <clears throat> then VSL number three, uh, we have the Spitfire library and we have all the synths and pianos. On VSL number four, we have all my custom drum made libraries that I made myself, uh, all very extensively featured in season one. Um, VSL number five is all short strings. So staccatos, spiccatos, whatever you call it, all short strings. A lot of them are uh, custom made libraries for myself, but there are also libraries out there from other brands. And then we get to VSL six and we're now looking at uh, LESS because we just did a tutorial with LESS solo violin. Um, but Machine number six uh, contains all the really big orchestral stuff. Half of it I made myself, half of it is from different uh, manufacturers, all the big brands, East West, um, uh, Cinebrass, uh, Spitfire, um, ATO, you, you name it, everything is on there. So let's now look a little bit under the hood how this works. With this little window here, you connect your computer to that external computer that lives somewhere else that has all these VSL libraries on there. And if I'm just clicking this away, and if you press F11, it's gonna bring up your dialogue window, your insert window where all these things live. So now we see here, one, two, four, five, six, three, and then a couple of other extra ones. We see the, the, the Spitfire here and the test VSL that I use to try new libraries if I like them. <clears throat> now, if I click this little window here, we could see activate outputs. And here you see all the outputs that are available in, um, in VSL. 
through this connection with, uh, um, with Cubase. And you see we activate a lot of them. So we're pretty much on the orchestral. We have 240 stereo tracks coming into Cubase. So if I look at my right screen right here and I'm scrolling through it, we see here uh, the trumpets, we see the horns, we see basses, cellos, violas, all different mic positions with different effect settings different EQ settings for every single mic position um, with different reverb settings. We get to that in a different tutorial. We see our pianos, blah, 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 and so forth and so forth. This is very widely covered in a tutorial earlier on in studio time number two, uh, number one. But now I want to take you to the machine room. <clears throat> and in the machine room, you'll see actually what the physical setup is, what we have here. <clears throat> so. This is the machine room. <coughs> we see the setup over here. Here we see all the floppies and, and, and other stuff for old samplers. I don't, I don't want to cover that right now. Um, so if we look at our wall over here, this is what it's all about. <coughs> so here we see our main Cubase computers and you see the names of the studios. So here we see Oasis, we see Paradise, um, here we see Hell Cubase, we see Cabin Cubase, the studios that I just mentioned. Uh, here you see all the hardware that we have connected. We use Universal Audio uh, Apollos on all machines. I'd like to mention that all systems are identical setups of one another. So Cubase files can just travel from one room to another room, just double click and everything is going to be the same and it's going to sound the same. Um, so. Here you have the VSL machines that are connected to my room, VSL1, VSL2, VSL3, and this is that really big one, number six, and here we have four and five, oh sorry, four and five, no, these are mine, four and five, sorry. So this whole set here is going to my room. Now, these computers are not ordinary PCs, these are server units, they're custom built, they have super fast processors, but you could do this also with very cheap computers. You will get a lot of out of it. You could buy a really cheap PC and just hook it up with Ethernet and just use that PC as your external VSL machine. You would be surprised how much you get out of it. Um, so we have actually quite a lot of them. So there's like six machines almost for every room. Um, then we also have our Pro Tools machines here and Pro Tools hardware and we run picture of Pro Tools to sync with uh, Cubase and we also use Cube, uh, Pro Tools to prep the sessions for the final mix, prep the stems for the music editors because all the music editors work on, um, on Pro Tools and it's still a standard during the, the mix process so it's important that you know how to work with Pro Tools and you have a Pro Tools set whether it's super small or it's big it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter. So pretty much this is what the machine room is um, and this is how everything is, is connected. So this is a somewhat shorter tutorial to, sh to tell you quickly how the setup is with the VSLs and here, how it works here in the machine room and how it goes everywhere. So I hope you like watching this and I'll see you soon for another tutorial.